for our audience, give us a little bit of background about, about Fleet Space Technologies. So Fleet is a space company and they started about 10 years ago. So this year's a Fleet's 10 year anniversary okay. Okay. and started to point when they started was to change the, the small satellite game. There are lots of billion dollar satellites that go into geostationary orbit, but really if we can build smaller, lighter, cheaper um, space hardware, we can leverage them to do interesting things on the ground. And so, um, you know, it started off with space and, and building satellites, and that's what we still do. We Our latest satellite launch was in January. We launched two satellites. I had to get up very early in the morning. You did. To watch that, actually. It, it, was, it was right in my afternoon. It was fine. I know. Um, <laughs> but we, about three years ago, three and a half years ago, figured that mineral exploration is as hard as space exploration, right? These are two very difficult things to do. Yeah. You know, difficult environments to work in, uh, difficult numerical problems to solve, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we now do is we make geophysical sensors and we live stream that data through our satellite network and, and into a, a processing platform. And it's really space enabled exploration. So how can we leverage space assets to do a better job of exploring for minerals on the earth? Uh, Fleet also is sending some of these in instruments to the moon. And so uh, in eight months or so, we'll be launching a seismic instrument to the moon uh, with some partners. We're not launching anything. We're going on a lander, but we'll be collecting seismic data on the moon beginning of next year. So that's really, really exciting. So we talked about this before very briefly, but uh, the name of the company, Fleet Sp Space Technology, and uh, I knew what your company did, but I didn't know how space fit in. And so your explanation is great. Now I get it. Leveraging that space technology to help us. Yeah. So when you're on in, Earth. when you're when you're exploring the moon, or if there yeah. if there's people, you know, or, or, or robotic exploration on Mars, what what sort of characteristics of the instrumentation and the infrastructure required to communicate with that inst instrumentation do you need in that environment, in yeah. that in that place? You know, how do you get extremely good quality data very quickly to make decisions as close as possible to near real time. From extremely remote area. When you only have a short amount of time yeah. to get there, right? Yeah. So, you, yeah. and this is classic field exploration as well. You have a short window of time to do yeah. something. Yeah. Northern Canada, snowed in, ice everywhere, you can't do anything. Yeah. What can we do in the field season we have? So, in sim this is a similar principle. So, I think it's that really taking that space kind of concepts and what would we need there yeah. and then realizing there's so much, par so many parallels. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and yeah. much like space exploration, a lot of the cost is in the logistics. Getting the thing to the moon costs a billion dollars. Yeah. Getting the field camp out to northern Yukon costs a lot of money. Yeah. Right. So how do we efficiently use that logistics cost that you've already sunk in there? Yeah. Let's let's collect data quickly. Let's collect the right sort of data and let's get it out of the field. And, and maybe you learn something while you're logistics cost and your people are still there and you can then act on it, right? Yeah. It's about acting on data yeah. as quickly as you can. And that's how you make things efficient.